Okay, now uh, let's continue here. Okay, next I want to talk about this one, pressure of gas trapped in capillary tube. Now, capillary tube is a very, very small tube. Okay, a tube that has very small cross-sectional area, a tiny tube. Now, capillary tube, let's say there are three arrangements. Uh. Let's say your capillary tube, you put it horizontal. Okay, let's say like this. Okay, and then inside the capillary tube, okay, so one end is closed and one end is open. Okay, open, exposed. Now, let's say you have a drop of mercury inside here. Okay, mercury. Right. Okay, so there's there's air particles inside this closed section here. So we just write P gas. And then this on the left end, it is exposed to atmospheric pressure. So here we have the atmospheric pressure. Now, as you put it in horizontal positions, and it stands still like this. The mercury, uh, the drop of the mercury doesn't move. Uh, let's say like this. Uh. So that is when the pressure of the left side will be equal to the pressure to the right side. Okay. So in this case, we write P atm equals to P gas. Right. If the capillary tube is put horizontally. Now, what if the I put it upright? What if I put it upright like this? Okay. This one, yeah, cha cha, yeah. Okay, like this. Now, if you put it upright and then you wait for a few seconds until the mercury drop, uh, until the drop of the mercury becomes still, okay, let's say it's somewhere here, let's say it's somewhere here, and this is the mercury. Now, what happened here is inside you have again the pressure of the gas. It's not as long as is as long as this region is not vacuum, it has a pressure. Okay, so pressure of gas. Then outside on top here is the pressure of the atmosphere. Now, if I draw a line over here, let's say I draw this one, this black line here. Okay, so the pressure of the mercury. The, is there any mercury? Is there any pressure of the mercury uh, acting on the on the on the, at that point okay let's label it let's call this point as point a what is the pressure acting on point a okay first is the atmospheric is pressing down okay so point a atmospheric pressure is acting on point a at the same time there is the weight of the mercury this one right the weight of this drop of mercury is also creating a pressure on point a so we write p mercury just like the examples that I've shown you just now, right? So in this case, this P atm plus the mercury pressure is the total pressure acting at point A. And since this mercury doesn't drop down, it, it, it remains still at this position. So this pressure of gas is balanced by these two, atm and the mercury. Okay, in other words, I can write this one, P gas equals to the pressure at atm and plus the pressure of the mercury like this okay so this is the equation this one p gas equals to p atm plus p mercury and this p mercury you can actually write as h rho g and it simply equals to the weight of the droplet the mercury droplet Okay, so if you see, if you change the position, if you change the orientation of the capillary tube, actually the pressure, uh, it changes. Okay, so you have to understand what is your orientation and how does it affect, how does it affect your pressure? Now, the third one, what if, what if I invert the tube? Okay, I invert the tube like this. Okay. You invert the tube and then you look where is the mercury stop. Let's say it's somewhere here. Lah. Okay, this is a mercury. Now again, inside this inside this closed section, you have the pressure of gas, and then here you have the pressure of atm. Right now, let's say the mercury stop here. It doesn't drop. Okay, it doesn't drop. It stop here at point. Let's call it a again. 
Okay. Now, point A is very important because point A is where all the pressure is balanced, right? So what pressure here? So P gas plus P mercury is equal to P at the end because the pressure, atmospheric pressure is holding the mercury droplets and holding the gas and preventing them from falling down. So that is when you have the pressure of ATM equals to P gas plus P mercury. Okay, so if you want to calculate the pressure of the gas, so sometimes the question asks you, what is the pressure of the gas inside this capillary tube? Then pressure of gas equals to P ATM minus the P mercury. So this is the third formula you have. Okay. So first one, this one, second one, this one, and third one, this one. Okay, so write this down. This is very important. <clears throat> okay, so let's say, let's say if I, okay, never mind, you write down this one first. Because I want to erase, I want to erase this one. Okay, let's look at a few simple examples of how this, how the, how how to calculate this one. Okay, now the same capillary tube. Let's see, I draw it um, upright, and let's say the length of this is two cm mercury. Okay. 2cm mercury. So here you have first you have P at the M. Oh yeah. P at the M. And this is P mercury acting at this point and equals to P gas. Okay, so calculate the pressure of P gas. So P gas equals to P at the M plus P mercury equals to P at the M. You can just use the, uh, no need to change to Pascal. If you want to change also can, but you can straight away, you can use 76 CM HG, right? As long as you're dealing only with mercury, then you can use this system of unit. Okay, CM HG. And then plus the pressure acting by uh, the, the mercury, straight away, you just take the length lah, to CM HG. So it's much more simple, okay? So 70, 78 cm Hg. This is the pressure of the gas inside, right? So if it's inverted, then you use the, the formula for the inverted one. If it's horizontal, then it's just P at the M equals to the P gas, right? So it depends on how it is placed. Okay, so, uh, just quickly jot down this one and then I'll move on to the next one. Mercury barometer.
Ok, finish. Hein. Ok, you see, uh, uh, all these barometer, manometer, YouTube manometer, J-tube manometer, all these manometer and barometers, they are used to measure the pressure of the gas, pressure of gases. Okay, uh, either can be atmospheric gas or, or any gas, enclosed gas. Okay, so mercury barometer, right, usually they are used to measure the atmospheric gas. Okay, now because uh, in the old times, right, people, they actually don't have the, the equipment to measure the atmospheric gas. It's like the, the very long time ago. Lah. It's like 16, 16th century, 15th century, or 18th century, something like that. Okay, now this one, uh, mercury barometer. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about the, the, the what happened in like very long ago, just a very short. Okay, so it's like in the 16, like 1643 uh, year, 1643, which is very, very long time ago, there's one uh, guy, his name is uh, called this one, Tor, Torcelli. He's actually a scientist, like he's actually a scientist, and he's a student of the Galileo. Okay, he's so Torcelli. So what happened is that Torcelli he he is figuring out what way to measure the atmospheric pressure, and how do I measure the change in atmospheric pressure? For example, if I go higher up in altitude, if I increase in altitude, then how does the atmospheric pressure change? How do I measure that? Okay, so this guy is actually he started, uh, he started out with a test tube. So what he did was, he take a test tube, okay, let's say a tube like this, and then he filled that up with mercury. Okay, he filled that up with mercury. So what he did later was that he quickly, he flipped it over, and then he stuck it in a, 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 a basin of mercury. For example, like, let me draw it out, let me draw it out. Okay, so this is the, Let's say you have a beaker here, and then quickly put it, invert it, and he immerse it into mercury. So this is also mercury. Okay, mercury. Now, what happened here is when he flipped over it quickly, right? So inside, it will create a vacuum inside here. Here is vacuum. It's like not perfect vacuum, lah. not perfect vacuum, but uh, it's like very less air particle, we can just assume it as vacuum. Okay, vacuum. So this vacuum here, now what happened here is he observed that the liquid, the mercury inside the tube does not fall. It remains at this level still. Okay, so what actually happened is that why does the mercury doesn't fall? Because there's a weight, right? Should be, should be there, this mercury should be pushing all these are, let's say the level here, let's say I label it this point A. Okay, the mercury inside the tube will flow out, right? It flow out and it pushes all the level rise, the level of the mercury will rise up. Okay, this level of mercury will rise up. So it is going against the air. Okay, it is going against, it is pushing against the air. So what happened is that at the same time, at the same time, the air pressure is also acting at the surface of the mercury. Okay, this is we call the ATM, the atmospheric pressure. It's pressing down the surface, preventing, preventing the level of the mercury from rising. So if if the atmospheric pressure prevent the surface of the, the level of the mercury from rising, meaning that this mercury here inside cannot flow out. Okay, it remains at this level. So what happened is that it, this will achieve equilibrium. It will, mimic, it will remain like this. Okay? It won't flow out, it won't flow in. Okay. Now, from here, if we take the same level, let's say I take this point here. Yeah. I thought it's a straight line. Okay, let me just get a straight line. Okay. This black level here. Okay. So this black level here, now let's see. The atmospheric pressure acting on this line is balanced by what? It is balanced by the weight of this liquid here, this one, here, okay? 
So this height of the liquid, if you take the weight of this liquid here, that is equal to the atmospheric pressure because they are all acting at the same level, which is the black line, the black line here. Okay, so from here, we can say that the pressure of atmospheric, atmospheric pressure is equals to the pressure at point A. Okay, so let's say your point A is over here, this one, this is A. Okay, same with the, in line with the surface of the mercury. Okay, now the pressure at point A, this one is also equal to the weight. Weight of column of mercury in the tube, right? Okay, same. So I can write this P at the end equals to H rho G, right? Provided the height is the height of the mercury column in the tube, and the density is the density of the mercury, of course, and the G is gravitational acceleration. So here I get this formula, P at the end equals to H rho G. Now from here, from here, P at the end, the E, H rho G, right? Now we know that pressure, atmospheric pressure is one times, uh, 101325 Pascal, okay? Standard atmospheric pressure. So we put it inside the formula, 101325 equals to the height we don't know yet, okay? And the density of the mercury is 13600 kilometer per cubic meter, a kilogram per cubic meter, and then G is 9.8, correct? Right? So if you find the height, you will, find, you will get 0 0.76 meter, okay? So 0 0.76 meter, that is equivalent to 760 millimeter, meaning that you will see that if you put mercury in the tube and then you invert it, immerse it in the a basin of mer mercury, and then you will see that this height here, it will be 760 millimeter. And which is why, which is why the atmospheric pressure is expressed as 760 millimeter Hg. Because if you use a barometer, this is called the barometer, okay? This setup is the barometer. If you use the mercury barometer, the height will actually be 760 millimeter hg okay now the height be careful of this one uh, the height is a measure from the surface let me just draw it one more time uh, clearly to let you see this one okay so if the test tube like this and then this is the basin like this okay now the height is a measure of from this point the top surface, this point, until the surface of the water outside. Okay, not here, not here, not here, it is same level at the this one over here. Okay, be careful with this one. Sometimes this question will be very tricky. It's a measure of this one and this one until the surface of the water and it is 760 millimeter Hg at sea level, all right? So at sea level, the, atmos the standard atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeter Hg. Now, what if you bring this one, what if you bring this barometer and you move it to the highest point of the mountain? Okay, let's say, what happened? Okay, so let me just erase this. Uh. Let me just erase this. Uh, not enough space for me. Okay, now if you bring the, okay, at, we know that at sea level, right? At sea level, it looks like this. Okay, so like this, like this. And this is 760 millimeter Hg. Okay, now if you bring it, if you increase the altitude, what happened to the barometer? Will, it, will the level of the column rise or fall? Okay, now, first thing, at high altitude, the atmospheric pressure decreases. Why? Because there are less air particles, right? You cannot breathe when you are up in 
when you're at high altitude, you're going to breathe less air particles. Less air particles means less pressure, right? Because pressure simply comes from the gas particles collision, knocking on the surface of the wall, anything, all right? So at high altitude, low atmospheric pressure, so the atmospheric pressure pushing the surface of the mercury, PATM, will decrease, right? So when it decreases, then the level in the column will also decrease because more mercury will flow out from the tube, right? So roughly like this. And if you bring it like uh, at, at the top of a mountain peak, right, is about, I think about 560. I saw example just now, like 560 millimeter Hg. So normal standard atmospheric pressure is like 700, right? So it's like decrease uh, 200 millimeter Hg, just an example, all right? So if you, if you, if the water level drops, meaning that the atmospheric pressure decrease, okay? The water level of the column. So this is how the Torcelli, the Torcelli, the, the guy, uh, the scientist, the, the, this is how he measured the changes, okay? So we, basically he bring, he bring his setup at this point and he moved to another point and he observed what is the changes, what is the changes in the level of the column. And then he's able to calculate the pressure of the atmospheric. Okay, so P at the M, remember this one, P at the M equals to, you can write one at the M, one times 10 to the power of five Pascal, Okay, this is sometimes we use one zero one three two five to be more exact, right? Seventy six cm hg or seven hundred and sixty mm hg. And sometimes, sometimes this one, uh, they use seven hundred and sixty tor. Okay, sometimes they use tor. This tor means his name lah, Torcelli lah. His name he used his own name, right? Seven hundred and sixty. And usually we use millimeter instead of cm, okay? <clears throat> now, let's look at a few examples of how to calculate the atmospheric pressure using the barometer. Okay, let me clear this. So look at this example here. Now, okay, the mercury column in the barometer is 72 cm tall at a certain elevation. What is the pressure of the air at this elevation? If the barometer was filled with water, what height of water can this air pressure support? Okay, so let's do it one by one. Look at A. A is first, we want to find the pressure of the air at the surrounding, so the atmospheric pressure at this point. Okay, so let's draw it out. Let's draw it out. And we have a barometer. And then like this, like this. Okay, so the height is how much? So from here to here is 72 cm tall, right? So 72 cm. So what is the atmospheric pressure? Now, we know that the atmospheric pressure acting on the surface of the mercury, P at the M, is balanced by the pressure acting on point A. Okay, The weight of the column of the mercury just above point A. All right, I repeat. I repeat the, the phrase, the atmospheric pressure acting on a surface on the, the black line, okay, let, let me draw the black line on this line here, is balanced by the weight of the column of the mercury just above point A. All right? So I can write P at the end equals to P mercury, all right? 
P mercury, uh, the pressure of the mercury acting on point A. Okay, and point A must be at the same level as the surface of the water, uh, the, the mercury. Okay, so from here I can write P at the end equals to H rho G, right? Because pressure of liquid, H rho G. So equals to P at the end is what we want to find, right? P at the end. Now P at the end is not is not a uh, one times ten to the power of five uh, Pascal uh, at this in this case in this case because here the question didn't mention it is standard atmospheric. It just asks you to find what is the pressure of the surrounding, right? So P at the M is an unknown. You want to find this one. So equals to the height of the mercury. So the height of the mercury, uh, 72, 70, 72 cm, right? Okay, where is my, wait, where is my paper? Okay. Okay, so 72, zero point. 7.2 and then the density of the mercury is 13600 and 9.8 okay and then you calculate you will get 95962 pascal so this is the pressure of the atm at that particular elevation okay huh? A. Now B. If the barometer was filled with water, what height of water can this air pressure support? Meaning that if you change the barometer, the mercury, if you change it to water, then what will be the height? Okay. So first thing, let's draw it up. Let's draw it up. So your barometer. And if inside is H2O then what is this H over here? Now, the atmospheric pressure you calculated is 95962. So it remains constant, all right? This one is a constant. So we can use the same formula. P at the end is balanced by the column of the liquid inside, right? H rho G. Okay, so this is the formula. So P at the end is 95962 and that equals to H, and then the density, you use the density of water because you change the mercury to uh, the water. Okay, so 1000 times 9.8. So the height becomes, what, 9.79 meter, right? So if you replace the mercury with water, it will reach up to nine meters. That is, that is a big difference, right? That is so high, right? Nine meter. Okay. So you can see that if you use water for the barometer, it's actually not practical. It's actually not practical because, uh, because of the density. Okay. You need a very long tube. Imagine you have a tube until nine meters. Okay. So that is why normally they use mercury, right? Because of the mercury of higher density. So the height is only 72 cm. There's a big difference between these two. It's like 0 0.72 cm only. Yeah, 0 0.72 meters okay, compared to 9 meters. Okay. Now, uh, I give you one minute, uh, two minutes, write down this one, and I'll go to the next last two examples. Then I'll give you some exercises. Okay.
Okay, next one. Uh, next example. Number two, the height of mercury is an open uh, in an open barometer is 69. The height of another fluid in a barometer is 176. What is the density of this fluid? Okay, let's draw it out. You have two barometers. Huh? First one. Okay, so first one is mercury, and the height is 69 cm. Okay, let's draw it, mercury. And then you have another one. Uh, and this one is even taller. 176 cm. Okay, let's call this liquid X, right? So you want to find the density of liquid X. Okay, how to find this? Now, first, what do you do? <clears throat> okay, let me put one point here. Okay, let's name this as point A. Point A. Point B. Okay, now you know that the atmospheric pressure, P at the end, is balanced by the pressure at point A, correct? Okay, so the atmospheric pressure pressing down on the surface of mercury is balanced by the pressure of the mercury acting on point A, okay, which is the, 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 the weight of this column of mercury here. Right, so P atm equals to PA, and also P A, P atm equals to PA, and also equals to PB. Okay, because these two barometers they are at the same environment, they are at the same atmospheric pressure. So P atm P atm equals to PA PB. So I can I can write PA is actually equals to PB. Okay, so from here. I know the pressure of the mercury acting at point A is the same as the pressure of the liquid X acting at point B. So I equate them. So that becomes uh, H rho G equals to H rho G. Okay, so I cross out this one and that becomes H rho equals to H X and rho X. Simply means the liquid X. Okay. So the hatch of uh, the, the mercury is 69. I just put in 69 and I just use CM. I don't worry about changing the unit because I'm because the other end it will cancel out each other. Okay, 69 times the density is 13600 equals to 176 is the height of the liquid times the density of liquid X. Okay, so the density of liquid X would be. Five three three two kilogram per cubic meter. This is the answer. Okay. Okay, I will be back in one minute. I want to go to the toilet while.
Okay, uh, guys, I create another link and you guys join back in. I want to show you the last example before I give you the exercise.